Hi everyone, I'm Dave Hatch and welcome to yet another after show here at MotorcycleExperience.ca and joining me this week is a good friend of mine. You, if you watched last week's after show, you know who he is, but I'm going to do it again. Resume time, Ken Edick. Uh, Ken is an old friend of mine, um, an old motorcycling friend. We've been um, riding together for about 25 years. You've been riding for how long? 40 years and that's, that's as far as I'll go. 40 years? Big fan of the Goldwing. You've had five. If you took all the miles and added them all up, how many miles have you logged on a wing? Half a million on the wing, and I don't know how many more on other uh, touring bikes that I've owned along the way. A half a million miles in the saddle. Uh, classic Goldwing rider, you. And, uh, and also a Canada Safety Council instructor, a dozen years. We've figured it out, maybe a couple of hundred at least, you've taught to ride a motorcycle. Over the years, more than I can remember. A lot of them were a lot of fun. A lot of them were apprehensive, but we got over that. Okay, so I, I actually did the math on that, and I thought you've probably come close to teaching about 3,000 people how to ride, so. Yeah, and, and my, mon my numbers might be modest compared to some of the instructors that are still there. Yeah, so. Last week we were talking about sage advice. What's the one piece of sage advice? And I threw it over to you and I gave you the, the gauntlet to drop and I gave you the hammer and the talking stick and I said, what is the one piece of advice you would pass along to our internet viewers? And uh, this week, I wanna talk about something, I'm gonna throw the subject out here this time. I'm gonna, I wanna talk about something that uh, Warren Milner and I discussed recently. Warren um, was with Honda Canada for uh, many years, I think about 30 years actually. Former road racer, hardcore rider, man. If you ever, <laughs> you ever, ever wanna ride hard and fast, Warren Milner will show you the way. Um, and Warren was telling me about a study that was done recently internally at Honda and it was about um, being comfortable. And, um, and basically what the study said is, if a rider is not comfortable, if you don't get a new rider uh, feeling comfortable um, and get that sense of comfort and security under their belt quickly, if that doesn't happen within the first couple of weeks of um, bike ownership, uh, they'll leave the sport because they never get that feeling of safety. They don't feel safe. Yep because they're not getting that feeling of comfort. It, it's a confidence thing right from the get-go. When we were teaching the people at the courses, we use small displacement bikes. But the key thing is the seat is as low as possible to the ground. You have to have that sense of security when your feet are planted on the ground, holding the bike at uh, stop, uh, about to stop, uh, anything in that. Then it can be out in the open road, it can be in city traffic. Sooner or later, you get to put your feet down and that confidence level it just goes up dramatically if you can feel that there's a good secure patch with the road in your feet, flat footed. Right. So again, uh, when you're shopping for a motorcycle and if you're new to the sport, uh, a lot of the manufacturers now are putting a big emphasis on you being able to put your feet down. That's big right. emphasis on, don't worry, we can lower this bike. Don't worry, there's another saddle that comes with this motorcycle. It'll lower it for you. So you're saying in terms of comfort, for you, comfort is defined by, can I touch the ground securely when I come to a stop? Doesn't matter how long your trip is going to be, whether it's just around the block or around the continent, sooner or later you gotta come to a stop. And right. there's going to be that uncertainty if you're tippy toe. And, and it doesn't matter that it's a big bike like mine, which weighs in the hundreds and hundreds of pounds, or an introductory bike that is a fraction of that. It can easily tip over if you can't get your feet firmly uh, planted on the ground quickly right but that kind of that should be something that you don't have to really concentrate on right okay so um, comfort we're talking about comfort in terms of putting your feet down on the ground I would extend that to even sometimes being comfortable enough to move your own bike I know a lot of people are intimidated you know in terms of can I lift this bike off the stand can I push it around if I need to right um, but then there's also, I know, again, through talking to Warren about this study, Honda spends a lot of time looking at that magic triangle. I don't know if you've seen the diagram, but the magic triangle is where are your hands sitting to the bars? Where is the saddle in relation to the ground? Where are your feet in terms of being underneath you? Are your feet forward? Are they directly underneath you? And they have this kind of comfort triangle that they're always playing with to try to get you in the ideal position. For sure. So comfort also means feeling comfortable on the bike, right? Yeah, but that bike is going to be 
specialized as time evolves to the kind of riding you want to do. A cruiser rider is laid back. He's not the guy that wants to do zero to 60 performance. He wants to take in the scenery. He's not the guy pushing the envelope on the speed, whatever the limit might be posted. Yeah. He's taking the scenery. So the whole ergonomic thing is laid back and relaxed. Feet out front, laying well back. A sport rider, completely different. He's up over the gauges. He's leaning forward into attacking each curve. Right. He isn't going to do it for six hours on end, Yeah. but his triangle will be dramatically different. I'm sort of in between. I can move my feet around and be aggressive. I like to scrape chrome with the best of them, but ergonomically, it's a relaxed pace for me for the long haul. Right. Well, for me, the, the perfect triangle I've learned over the years is feet underneath me, um, my knees not too bent. Um, hands in front of me almost just below the shoulder cuff you know just uh, sort of comfortable reach in front of me and an upright riding position for my back that that for me is the perfect riding position but overall we're talking about being comfortable whether you're on a on a sport bike and you're in attack mode or you're in a cruiser and you're laid back it really all comes down to though making sure the bike fits you and that you're comfortable because in that uh, environment you can work on feeling safe right That's right I mean you can you can customize any bike to any degree but it'll cost you don't try and mimic a pattern of a bike just because those are the people you ride with right your bike and my bike we went out today I, I deflected a lot of wildlife for you yeah. when you let me be in the lead yeah but yours was having a lot more fun maneuvering through the twisties where it was a lot more work for me but at the end of the day we could both go out and ride the same roads right one was more tuned to it than the other yeah. but if we're ready to go to California I suggest I'll probably be a little more comfortable than you will by the time we get there yep that's true now that brings us to a very good point you know when we talk about being comfortable feeling safe and secure um, you have to consider a lot when you go shopping for a motorcycle. Clearly, you've got the wing. Uh, you like logging those miles and, and uh, eating the road uh, in terms of mileage and, and getting out and seeing the world on your bike. So you've chosen that weapon for that piece of road. Right. Uh, this baby right here is uh, purely for fun. It's um, commuting. Uh, short duration rides um, you can see by just by looking at this there's really not a lot of space for luggage I could probably put a tank bag on there and get away what for I was a weekend at before we started this yeah, yeah. but uh, no the this bike has a different purpose it's sure. it's it's really about having fun carving the back roads and uh, you know for my morning commute um, my 20 minute ride through the countryside to the office this is perfect. I don't think yeah. I would want that bike to take me to the office every day. And, and that's understandable. I, I mean, we, we, were, we were contacted a lot of times when it was putting on the training by students saying, so I guess that's the best bike. And they go, not necessarily. Right. It's the best bike for me. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that that's what you're going to evolve to. And the same with every instructor. We were just enthusiastic to want to pass along the excitement of motorcycling. The bike that we rode did not make it the perfect bike. It was the perfect bike for the kind of riding that individual does. And that's what you have to remember when you get into motorcycling. Right. So if you're um, shopping for a motorcycle or you're looking to get into the sport, I really encourage you to spend a lot of time thinking beyond the image. Because I remember when I was getting into the sport, it was all about how would I look on that motorcycle. Right. But think a lot about what is it you want to do? What is the purpose of that motorcycle and, and how does it fit your lifestyle? Secondary to that, uh, think about how that bike fits you. And it, you know, if you're helping someone else, your partner, your friend, uh, if you're helping a spouse, choose a motorcycle. Help them through that process, especially shopping. You know, get out there and sit on some bikes ask your friends that are in the motorcycling community, the dealers, um, sit on the bikes, make sure you're comfortable, that you're not over your head, it's not too much of a bike for you, don't be embarrassed about that, whether it's a 250 or a 500 or a 1200, um, it really has to be a good fit for you in terms of safety, comfort, and what you're gonna do with that bike. And as an individual evolves into motorcycling, if they've got a few different bikes under their belt, if you go with them, that was the time to say, what didn't you like about this bike? What are you looking for? You've got a real life comparison to, to base it on. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the first time newbie, 
They don't know what style they want. They see the style that their friend talked them into and think yeah. that that's what they have to mimic. And that may put them off, like you said originally. If it, comfort isn't there, if they're not enjoying it, they're not going to get into the sport. Right. So don't do it just because that friend is riding that kind of bike. You really got to sit back and say, what is it that I want from it? And then you won't have any excuses not to get on it. Right. And remember, these things are tunable. You know, that's the other thing. It took me several years to learn this. Um, yeah, the mirrors are adjustable, but so are the levers. Yep. You know, where the levers sit in terms of the relation to your hands. The bar can be moved forward the, and the back. Foot pegs and, the and, foot and the shift pegs. mechanisms down there can be altered from the way it came from the factory. Right, so when you're sitting there and you've decided, okay, this is the style of motorcycle I want, this is the type of riding I plan on doing, and these are the two or three bikes that fit that mode, um, and now you're really getting into tailoring the motorcycle, sit with your dealer and talk about how could we adjust this bike to fit me, tailor it, and that includes the saddle, you know, yep. will you need to have that saddle shaved, will you need to select the lower saddle, can you try it, um, and um, do you need a windscreen, will that also help you feel comfortable when you're out on the highway, things like that that really allow you to tailor the motorcycle to you, so when you get on it you go, this is my bike, I feel secure, I feel safe. It, it's so much different than a car, because mm -hmm. most people will never tailor a car other than move the seat forward, backwards, and the tilt steering, that's it. Shift, well, maybe Adjust mirror. the mirror. Maybe a maybe, mirror, okay. maybe. But uh, yeah, the, a motorcycle uh, allows a lot more flexibility that you don't have to be a master mechanic at to do. Yeah. Uh, but that would just not be uh, considered in, in a car purchase. So yeah, they can make the world of difference between an uncomfortable bike and a bike that you don't want to ever give up. Right. So there you have it for this week's after show. I know we've been kind of rambling on about this, but we don't want to lose you. If you're thinking about getting into this sport, we want you to stay with us. And uh, we don't want to hear, I took the course and I tried a bike for a couple of weeks, but I never felt comfortable. And so I sold the old bike or whatever. You know, we want to keep you in this sport and we want to keep you safe. And uh, we want to make sure that you have half a million plus miles uh, under your, your belt when, uh, when the day is uh, long. Wasn't so. for our Canadian climate, I probably wouldn't even own a car. Yeah, there you go. So please consider all this and, uh, and Ken, thank you for, for joining me today. It thank was a really good me. ride this morning. Thank you. Um, and uh, thank you for joining us again on, uh, on the Motorcycle Experience After Show. Till next time.